For the Oklahoma Sooners, the college football playoff does not begin one month from now. If you want to be realistic, it begins this Saturday at the Big 12 title game in Arlington. It's like a quarterfinal game. In Oklahoma, they're not the only ones in this boat. I mean, let's face it, the SEC championship, Auburn, Georgia, the winner, they're going to go to the playoff, the loser's out. Same thing in the ACC title game between Clemson and Miami. Winner goes, loser's out. Big Ten, if Wisconsin wins, do I think they'll get in? Absolutely. They're the only Power 5 unbeaten left. If Ohio State, however, pulls off the upset, do I think the Buckeyes get in? Possibly, but I wouldn't guarantee it. That's because Alabama's number 5 committee will have a tough decision if it comes down to those two teams. And even though I don't think TCU with an upset is going to get into the playoff, no question, Oklahoma would not. So TCU would love nothing more to get revenge on the Sooners for what happened just a few weeks ago in Norman where Oklahoma used a 38-point first half, which was more than enough to take down the Horned Frogs back when the two teams were ranked in the top six in the country. But for Oklahoma, with the win, they'll definitely get into that college football playoff by the Sugar or the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. So there's one win away from doing that. And you know what? You know what makes a team great? Not just being able to defeat a really good team, which OU did a few weeks ago against the Horned Frogs, but what makes them great is being able to beat them again. And for me personally, I think it's going to be all mental for Oklahoma. Not taking TCU lightly and trying as much as possible. You're not going to be able to do it fully, but as much as possible, trying to eliminate that game a few weeks ago. It's not going to be 38-20 to 20 OU starting off this game. It's 0-0, different location, a lot more at stake, a Big 12 championship, and the case of the Sooners trying to make the college football Final Four. Whatever happened a few weeks ago is dead now. means nothing. If TCU wins this game, you know that victory over TCU um, in Norman not long ago, it means absolutely nothing. You have to try to block that out and start from scratch and treat TCU like you haven't played them all season before. It's that simple. Too often, a team in Oklahoma's position blows it because they look too far ahead. The Sooners have to understand that TCU is still a dangerous team, that they're still well coached, and this is a team that still you know, went 10-2 and on the season. Went 10-2. and That's not bad at all. You know, and by the way, um, TCU's only losses this year to the Sooners and to the only team that Oklahoma lost through this year in Iowa State. Now, if you're curious, Drew Samia will play. Um, he wasn't handed any more suspension time. You might remember he was kicked out of the uh, West Virginia game, but that happened in the first half, so he'll get to uh, play the entire game in Arlington against TCU on Saturday. Now, as far as the flip side goes, you're going to see Matt Boson as well. Um, this is a guy uh, that was um, all Big 12. In fact, had a heck of a game against Baylor last week in TCU's win uh, to close out the regular season. Boson, as you uh, might recall, against Oklahoma not long ago, uh, got kicked out of the game uh, early second quarter. So most of the game, you didn't see Matt Boson, and Oklahoma took advantage. Sooners have to win this battle. Matt Boson is one of the better tacklers. He's one of the best guys in all of college football at getting to the quarterback, in which you know, TCU specializes, but they didn't specialize against the Sooners that particular night. But then again, this is a whole different game. Not all good news for TCU, though, because they will be without their starting safety, um, Nick Orr, for the first half. If you watched the Baylor game last week, you know, just like the OU West Virginia game, TCU-Baylor was pretty chippy. And as a result, uh, Nick Orr swung a punch. Well, the uh, Big 12 caught that um, not long after the game. And so, um, or will not play in half number one. But you will see him third and fourth quarter. But you know how Oklahoma is going to win this game? Balance. Very simply put, balance. Yes, of course, you got to have the SI cover board for this week. Baker Mayfield, get the job done. But really, it comes down to just as much of Rodney Anderson and Trey Sermon doing the job than it does Baker. This is why Oklahoma is 11-1. People automatically think it's Baker Mayfield and nobody else. And granted, the Sooners would not have gotten quite as far without Baker Mayfield as they would with him. But let's just be realistic. OU's got weapons, and they have weapons everywhere. 
obviously in the running department. Rodney Anderson's second team, all Big 12, just recently announced and well-deserved, especially the way he's played the second half of the year. And, of course, even though you have to treat TCU like a whole other opponent, a whole other game, that previous meeting against the Horned Frogs, Rodney Anderson absolutely tore TCU apart. So you know the Horned Frogs, their attention, a lot of it will be focused on Rodney Anderson. But, of course, Trey Sermon can come in handy as well. But the passing attack of Oklahoma, this is where we've seen them just dominate all season long. You know, C.D. Lamb, Hollywood, Marquise Brown, and of course, sometimes a forgotten guy, but he is the number one receiver this year for Oklahoma, the tight end, Mark Andrews. I call him the security blanket for Baker. So pass protection, it was a key a few weeks ago against TCU. Well, you know what? A new game, it's a lot more at stake, but the message is still the same. Protect Baker. Of course, we know how good Boson is up front. We know that TCU has one of the best defensive lines in the country and one of the top 20 defenses in college football in terms of total yardage allowed. They don't give up a lot of yardage. So we'll see if the Oklahoma offensive line, who Baker felt got disrespected because, you know, this offensive line was not named as one of the top three award finalists. Bama, Auburn, and Notre Dame's offensive lines got more credit. I don't know how, but that's just the case. Maybe this is Oklahoma's way of saying, you know something this Saturday? We'll prove that we're the best offensive line, and we'll see if that could come into reality for a second time against the Horn Frogs. But it won't happen unless there's balance. One interception by Baker's fine, but once he throws two or more, if he does, then it could play right into TCU's hands and give that TCU defense the confidence that they didn't have in the first matchup. We'll see if the Sooners can again have TCU backed up. So what can you expect when the Oklahoma defense takes to the field against the TCU offense? Well, you're obviously not going to be seeing Anderson, the running back for the Horn Frogs. Um, he is still battling injury. Kyle Hicks most likely will get the bulk of the carries. That really hurts for the TCU side, you know, because Anderson has not only been their leading ball carrier in terms of total yardage, but he averages six yards a carry, which is higher than any other running back for the Horn Frogs. So there could be a game where Kyle Hicks gets the bulk of the carries and you see the quarterback, Kenny Hill, run a little bit more often. He's got some speed. So in a game like this, force the mistakes if you're the Sooners. Again, don't just rely on the front four. Get a little bit of pressure from the outside in a game like this. For the Sooners, stay away from those stupid penalties, which we've seen lately, especially against West Virginia. Do not provoke those officials to throw in those 15-yard flags. Anything at all that would give TCU any hope to believe that they can win this ball game. The Sooners in that first half, really throughout the entire game in the first matchup against TCU, did one hell of a job. We'll see if they can do it once again. Final thoughts on this game. Look, I'm not expecting OU to name their score in a matchup like this. It's not easy trying to beat a terrific club twice in the same season, but that's exactly the task that OU has in front of them. But as long as the Sooners stay away from those stupid mistakes like the penalties, you know, turnovers, I see the Sooners, though in a tougher game, still winning by double digits. The Sooners are the better team. Baker Mayfield's the best player in the country, and he has playmakers around him, both running and receiving, that can change the game at any time. Look for the Sooners to win. I'm going to go 38-24. to The Sooners to win another Big 12 championship, and for the second time in the past three years, to make it to the biggest stage in college football, that four-team playoff. Won't be easy, but I do believe they'll get the job done at Jerry World. Uh, just a reminder, by the way, my three picks, me against the coin, one more time this year, coin has a one-game lead on me with one week to go. That means the coin I will be picking three games. That's right, three conference title games. See how that turns out. We'll have that on the next video on this webpage, so don't miss it. And don't forget about my post game of OU TCU. I'll have it, it looks like, on Sunday. Sorry for the delay on that, but that's just the way it goes. Oklahoma, I have picked to win. Won't be um, a blowout, but I do think the Sooners get the job done. That's my look at OU and TCU Big 12 title game. Boomer Sooner.